It's time for the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Each week, Trading Stocks Made Easy demystifies stock trading and investing so you can profit big. And now, here's the host of Trading Stocks Made Easy, the wealthy investor, Tyrone Jackson. And welcome back to Trading Stocks Made Easy. It is I, Tyrone Jackson, the wealthy investor. You know, I cherish our time together all the time. And whether I'm in an airport or some shopping center, someone always goes, aren't you that wealthy investor guy? And I got to tell you, it tickles me every single time that I hear that. But now that I know that our show has been downloaded over one million times, there really are people who are listening out there, and you are one of them. So you know what we're going to talk about today? We're going to talk about investing for your kids and talking to your kids about money. Did you know that most people in the United States of America and other countries never really have a money talk? Well, wealthy people talk to their kids about money and wealth and opportunity all the time. How many times have you heard me say on this show, wealth is nothing but a series of positive habits? I say that so much because it's actually true. Now, if you really want to pass along generational wealth to your kids, the easiest thing to do is start an account at TD Ameritrade with, let's say, $500. A lot of people think to get rich, you have to have a lot of money to get started in the stock market. And sometimes that's true, and sometimes it isn't. In the case of your kids, here's what you need to know. They have time on their side. So if you have a little boy or girl who's about five years old, when are they really going to start being introduced to money? Probably somewhere between 16, 17, 18, 19, or 20. That means they have at least 10 to 15 years for their money to grow in the stock market before they even have to really become aware of what money is. So if you were going to choose stocks in a portfolio right now in today's world that you think are going to be around 15 years from now, what would they be? Well, on prior episodes, I've talked to you about the idea of the stock market being viewed as a casino and a gambling hall. The stock market is never a casino or a gambling hall. When you're investing money, you're willing to take a long-term view of the market and anticipate a sense of how our world is going to change. For example, the easiest stock to buy right now for your son, daughter, or even niece or nephew who may be five or six years old is Disney stock. Now, let's think. The Walt Disney Company has been around for what? Well, we're getting close to 100 years, right? We know about Roy Disney's original vision, And he could have never seen Disney streaming service, right? Well, one of the reasons the stock has done so well over the last 30 to 40 years, yes, 30 to 40 years, is because Disney is a company that adapts. When there's a new form of entertainment, it adapts and it develops in its Disney ecosystem a whole new set of rides, cartoons, stories, and characters around the new world. And as Disney has done that in the last 30 to 40 years, guess what they're going to do in the next 30 to 40 years ahead? They're going to adapt. So although Roy Disney could never have seen Disney Plus with 100 million subscribers and handheld telephones where people view their content, the company and its leadership does see that. Disney is also very good at finding a new revenue stream. So as streams develop, even in the theme parks, they are right there capitalizing on it. So since Disney has a higher likelihood of being around 10, 15, 20 years from now, it makes sense for your children to own even one or two shares of Disney stock. Now, let's switch gears here and we'll talk about semiconductors. Okay, so I won't name names of particular companies because it's a high risk sector right now with a lot of potential. But does it make sense for you to go out and start buying semiconductor stocks right now for your five, six or seven year old? Probably not. We don't even know if semiconductors will be needed 25 years from now in computers, televisions or handheld devices. We know right now It's a functional necessity for all of our electronics to work. 
So anytime we take a longer term view uh, as to our economy or economics, that's when we know we're making good choices. So if we look at stocks that are members of the Dow and the S&P like Visa or MasterCard, what do they do? Well, I say constantly on this show, Visa and MasterCard are not banks, they're brands. And they license their name to your local bank or credit union, and they get three cents of every transaction worldwide every day. Do you think credit cards will be around 20 years from now, 15 years from now, or even five years from now? Well, probably a high probability. So, If you were building a portfolio for uh, someone who's younger, when you look towards the future, might you want to include a couple of shares of Visa, MasterCard, and Disney? The answer is yes. Why? Those stocks also pay a dividend. Now, I know you might not be accustomed to think of a five-year-old as receiving dividend checks, but uh, that just speaks of the kind of family that you come from. As you know my story, I was raised by a single mother, right? So the whole idea of a dividend check coming in my name No way. We were just trying to keep the bills paid. But now that I have two daughters who have been raised in an upper class environment, right, the idea of my daughters receiving dividends, it's not foreign to them and it's certainly not foreign to me. So when we're looking towards the future, we want to make sure that the stocks that we choose also pay dividends and are companies that are probably going to be around for a while. That doesn't include semiconductors. Now, I'm going to get a little controversial here because this next stock I'm going to talk about as it relates to the future has its own fan club. Yes, I'm talking about Tesla, whose shares have done remarkably well in the last 52 weeks. And Tesla is seen by the auto industry as being the leader in electronic vehicles. Now, does that mean that they're going to be the leader 10, 15 years from now? Could there be a company that's in its embryonic stages right now that will go public and leave Tesla in the dust? Well, we don't know. And that's the fun part about investing. So you can choose leaders of today to put in your child's portfolio, but it doesn't mean they're going to be around tomorrow. So you've asked me if I were to put Tesla shares in a portfolio for a five-year-old, the answer would be no. Why? The electronic vehicle market is in its infancy and will evolve many times over. So you want to stick with companies that you think will be around. Uh, An easier choice in the Dow is a company like McDonald's. Do we think McDonald's will be around 20, 30, 40 years from now? Yes, in some way, shape, or form. McDonald's may start to buy up other brands like Wendy's or Burger King or other fast food chains that have just been birthed and put them all under one umbrella. And when one company buys another brand, we call that non-organic revenue growth. Okay, so when you're thinking about buying stocks or setting up a simple portfolio for a child who is also a loved one, think about 15 years from now and whether that brand will still be around and whether the company shares actually pay a dividend. If you're thinking towards the future, then guess what? You're planting the seeds to make future millionaires in your family. Back in a moment. Want to increase your stock market trading profits? Then you need to start your monthly membership to WITradeSchool.com right now. Don't understand how to write covered calls for monthly income? No problem. Simply review Tyrone's latest stock trades in our video library as many times as you need. WITradeSchool.com is all about helping you get the financial education you need to earn money in the stock market and change your financial life. Tyrone Jackson, the wealthy investor, has helped his students earn thousands of dollars per month trading stocks online from home. These are people just like you. So what are you waiting for? Follow Tyrone Jackson's Red Hot Stock Trades and Investment Strategies today. Don't wait. Start your monthly membership at WITradeSchool.com right now. And welcome back to Trading Stocks Made Easy. On today's show, we're talking about investing for kids. And I started off talking about your kids because they have time on their side. They have time to be rich. Why? If you have 15 years before you even start to deal with money, then guess what? 
Stocks grow very well over a 15-year period of time, especially if they're members of the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500. So in the same way that you would take a long-term view for your children, you should do the same thing for your portfolio. Just trading hot stocks or investing in hot stocks today, not always the best formula for making you rich. We want to go slow on the investing side of things. Now, if we're going to invest in the stock market for our kids, then we have to have a day when we're going to have the money talk with our kids. You see, if you want your kids to carry on into the future with positive financial habits, then you'll have to choose a time to actually sit down and talk to them about working a job, budgeting, saving, and investing. So I thought I'd lead as an example in my life. Well, I am a divorced dad, and I used to see my kids several weekends out of the month. And guess what we used to have at our house? We used to have stock market Sundays. This started when my daughters were around 9, 10, 11, or 12, because they could look at charts of stocks that have risen over time. So I started them off with just looking at pictures. Hey, look at this company. Look at that company. Look at shares of Staples and McDonald's and IBM and Disney. And what I would do is we would print out a chart One week, and I would say, when dad sees you again, the person who's chosen the stock that has gone higher in the next week or so gets their allowance doubled. So do you think my daughters had incentive to choose really good stocks? Well, they did, but they were really choosing pictures first. Why did I choose pictures? Because it's like a visual representation of a stock price. They didn't know anything about top line revenue, institutional involvement, et cetera, et cetera. It just taught them that there was something to the stock market. And the person who had their allowance doubled understood that the stock market was a way to make money. So you see how I introduced them to the stock market and had it make sense to them at an age appropriate time? Now, when they turned 16 and 17 and they started to work part time, I had them think about saving and investing. Now, here's what we know about saving and investing. Saving means that you're putting your money someplace where there is an automatic rate of return. Why do the wealthy invest money? Because they want to get an above average return that is higher than just savings, right? So, Today's world, if you put money in a savings account, you'd be lucky to get 1% to 2% annually. Why do we invest in the stock market? So that we can try to achieve 5 to 10% annually or more. Now, you know if you're covered call writing, that takes your rate of return on an annual basis to a whole nother level. But that's what investing is all about. Taking some money, putting it at risk so that you can get a higher rate of return than just the returns that you would get with savings. So my daughters understood that. And so we were able to have a greater dialogue about the stock market. Now, I tend to expose them to a lot of things around the world. We take fabulous trips. And every summer I do the same thing when we vacation in Maui. I show them a trade. I make the trade, I sell a cover call, I transfer that money out of my account, and then I transfer it into my checking account, and then we go to lunch the next day. So I've taken to showing my kids great experiences, and then they see the money coming from the stock market and us enjoying the lifestyle. I do this so that It's not just data inside an account. I can go to the ATM and go, this was the money that was made in the stock market. So they have no mental, emotional, or spiritual blocks when it comes to money. Why? Because dad has shown them that there are positive ways to make money that you can spend right now and generate cash. There are trades that are low-risk trades that generate residual income every 24 hours if I wanted to. So my daughters already believe that they're going to build their own home, that they're going to have a second home, that they're going to be able to travel the world, and that they're going to have financial freedom. And guess what? They're right, because their minds have been primed by example and pictures and charts and results. Well, if I could do the same thing for my kids, you can do the same thing for yours. But you have to remember, if you're not willing to have the money talk or a series of money talks, particularly with your teenagers, 
they'll never get the financial education they need to start creating wealth and residual income. Does this all make sense? So kids usually want higher priced items around 13, 14, or 15 years of age. And the more that they want, the greater the opportunity for you to explain to them how money flows through the world. Now, I happen to be the kind of person that didn't want my daughters trading time for dollars. It's okay in their early years of life, but I want them to expect that their investments are their primary form of income. Why? Because investment income never goes away. And since a stock can only go up, go down, or stay the same, they should be able to generate income regardless of the market's position at the time. It's incumbent upon us as adults, uncles, aunts, and grown-ups to initiate the money talk and a financial education with the next generation and those kids that we love. For if we don't do it, no one will, because we know you don't get a financial education that you really need in high school, college, or grad school. Therefore, it is up to you. Start thinking about the future. You know, the Wealthy Investor Program is not only about wealth and residual income for yourself, but it has as its cornerstone the idea of helping other people. And if you are listening to this show right now, guess what? You have the ability to help someone, someone in your family have a better, brighter financial tomorrow. I hope you take that action and you think about who you can help within the next 60 days, just opening an online trading account for them in their name and buying stocks with an eye towards the future. That's your assignment. That's my motivation for today. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Trading Stocks Made Easy. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Be sure to rate and review our show on iTunes. While you're on iTunes, be sure to click the subscribe button and you'll automatically receive our next episode. 